Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, then welcome! My name is Christina, and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. So before you go, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave any comments that you have for me down below. We have seen so many product launches at the beginning of this year, and that is a very normal thing. A lot of brands are coming out back to back to back with new products. This happens every year, and it just got me thinking because it almost feels a little bit overwhelming with how much is coming out. but it's it started to make me think about all the products I already have and the products that I don't want to forget about. So in this video, we're going to be talking about all the makeup products that you should not forget about. These are all products that I once really loved. Maybe they were standout products for me. Maybe I use them in my everyday routine or just my makeup routine in general. These are things that I personally have kind of forgotten about. I'm sure that there are people out there that still use these products to this day whether they use it daily or they just have it cycling in their routine. But this video kind of serves as like a reminder to myself that these exist and that they're still great products. I'm gonna be demoing them today for you guys. I applied them on my face and kind of talked you guys through why I think they belong in this video. So if this is something you're interested in, then let's get started. I'm gonna try to go in order of application. So the first product we're gonna be talking about is this one right here. I actually still use this one very often but I don't see a lot of people using this much anymore so this is the Bobbi Brown color corrector this is in the shade peach they have since expanded their line of color correctors mine is crazy dirty and messy but I love this I think that it is an amazing color corrector the texture of this is definitely more of a thick cream which I personally think is really really great when it comes to color correctors especially if you do have more oily skin type like I do I feel like like it lasts really long throughout the day and not only that but it has really good peach pigmentation there you can see as I'm going in and dotting this onto my acne spots it's really covering them up and I like to kind of just dab it on there and then leave them alone because then I'll go on top with my foundation and my concealer and it'll just stay there because it is a thicker consistency it really does stay where you place it and as you blend out your foundation and your concealer this just kind of naturally gets blended out with it but not too much we've been seeing a lot of liquid color correctors coming out recently like in the form of like concealers you know what I mean those are great they're really nice for brightening and obviously color correcting I think that those formulas just tend to be a little bit more liquidy and they're more geared towards under eye circles you know versus acne scarring this is going to be something that I personally continue to use next up we have two foundations that I feel like you definitely should not forget about. They're not necessarily old, but they did come out last year and I think maybe the year prior to. It is the Hourglass Soft Glow Foundation. I have this in the shade number eight and then the NYX Bear With Me Blur Foundation. And I have this in the shade Medium Neutral number 11. Now this one is definitely a lot darker for me currently, so I am gonna be applying the Hourglass one. So let's talk about the Hourglass one first. I did a whole video on this when it first First launched last year it gives you the most soft blur as you can see just glides on first off it's a really good match for me currently which I'm really pleased about it not only blends out really really thin it still gives you a lot of coverage and when it blends into the skin you can see it kind of like fills in those pores and it glides over any imperfections on the skin and I've never had issues with this foundation clean clinging to anything. I've never had issues with any creams going on top of it, any powders going on top of it. I would say this gives me kind of like a natural matte finish, especially with my skincare. I do like to go in and really, really hydrate the skin. So that's a lot of the glow that you guys are seeing right now. But because of that, this foundation applies effortlessly on the skin. You can see that one pump covered my entire face. I would consider this one full layer. I can probably go in a little bit more on the tops of my cheeks, which is something I typically do. I'll go in with maybe like a third or a half pump and just do the rest of my face. But you can see here, the complexion is looking perfected already. This foundation to me is literally a liquid version of their ambient lighting soft glow powders. I will say it's a little bit difficult difficult 
to find your shade match. I actually thought I was a completely different shade when I was looking at the shades online and I had gone into Sephora and got shade matched. I get a really good high medium coverage, I think, but if I wanted to, I could go in and do another layer and get like what I would consider full coverage. And I don't necessarily depend on my foundations to cover up all of my hyperpigmentation because I go in with concealer for that. This allows you to get a very, very thin layer and your skin still looks like skin. Before I move on, I wanna talk about the NYX Bear With Me Blur Skin Tint Foundation. Now this one, I think, had a ton, a ton of hype when it first released, and then it kinda of just died down. I did a video on this one as well, I'll link it down below. And the reason why I think this one really stands out is because it is a true full coverage matte foundation without looking really drying, without emphasizing texture on your skin, and really working well with a lot of different powder creams and liquids on top now i will say the shade range is not the best as you can see this one is quite orange but it does oxidize and it comes out a little bit darker than i expected it to but once i actually blended it out it really kind of melted into the skin in an odd way i'm used to foundations oxidizing darker so you can see there it's pretty dark obviously not a good shade match for me but as you blend it in it kind kind of like melts and morphs into this more wearable shade and of course I am blending it out so it is going to be a little less pigmented so that's why like you know it may not look as dark it has blended out a little bit lighter and the back of my hand just looks super perfected and it's more matte like you can see it almost looks a little bit airbrushed it covers up the veining and stuff on the back of my hand here's my other hand for reference so you can kind of see the difference here but this is a really really solid foundation even though i do tend to have more oily skin i found that hydrating the skin really really well with my skincare beforehand helped this lay very smooth on the skin i would recommend working quite quickly with this only do sections at a time and blend it out before moving on to the next area of the skin because this does dry down very quickly i think that it's very true to what it claims to be and yeah i would probably rate this as one of the top drugstore foundations currently next i'd like to move on to concealer and i want to talk about this one i'm not going to be applying it because you may be able to tell right here it's bad <laughs> like it's expired at this point i definitely have forgotten about it but I haven't forgotten the love I have for this concealer. I'm going to be applying a mixture of the Kofi concealer in Mango Drop and the Hourglass in the shade number Sienna. Shade number? <laughs> But anyways, we're gonna be talking about this. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I really enjoy the hydrating version. I feel like it gives me the perfect dewy finish that I look for in a concealer, but it's not too slippery to where, you know, it slips and slides all over the skin whenever you buff it out, and then it kind of like loses its pigmentation. I would say that this also has a very high medium coverage. I wouldn't necessarily say it's full coverage. Well, I don't know. I think Think you could get there like if you did a couple of layers you could definitely get more high pigmentation or full pigmentation but i love the fact that you can put this on the skin and as you blend it out it kind of like dissipates on the skin but it keeps that coverage i would say that they have a pretty good shade range i haven't found something that exactly matches my skin but i found a couple of shades that work for me i find that this definitely does have to be set down i usually set down my concealers no matter what i can't remember the last time i didn't set down my concealer this barely creases like as you're blending it out i've experienced some concealers where as i blend out the rest of my face under my eyes get really really creasy and slippery that doesn't happen with this but i do find that whenever you set this down it still looks really nice and i find that it doesn't emphasize any textures or fine lines under the eyes i really think for the price point you can't beat this it's such a good staple We've seen so many new concealer launches at the end of 2023, and I'm inclined to say that this one is very similar to the Kosas Revealer Concealer, but also the Colfi one. This 
in texture I think is very similar to where it's a little bit thicker but you can definitely feel that hydration and it holds on to that pigmentation as you blend it out but I would say that it is slightly more hydrating so that's why I feel like it's similar to the Kosas concealer because that one does look more hydrating on my skin the next products I want to talk about are these nude sticks cream blushes I think that these were my first introduction into cream blushes and bronzers these are incredible and I feel like they definitely have kind of like fallen off of people's radars because I mean now I feel like the standard is cream blushes you know so as we know these do have like a double end so they have the brush right here and then the color is right on the other side I do not use the brush I feel like it's too small and I'm not able to get the type of blend that I want so I never really use that so I'm just gonna put the cap back on there but the actual blushes are incredible especially if you have more oil Oily skin type and you find that cream products just kind of slip and slide throughout the day and they don't last very long these do have a drier texture so I find that they last an incredibly long time on my skin this is the shade in the nude which was definitely one of my favorites like a go-to type of product this one is sun kiss now this is supposed to be a bronzer but on my skin whenever I put it on and I like blend it out it kind Kind of looks more like a blush like you can see it almost looks like a pinky brown shade right there and the reason why these stand out to me and I think that we should not forget that we have these on the market I feel like these are absolutely perfect for anyone that has even the slightest amount of oil production on their face like these blend out like a dream you definitely have to be careful go in layers I don't like to swipe this on my skin because I do find that it may pick up my concealer just based on which concealer I'm wearing that day but whenever I like put my brush in there or I do it on the back of my hand and then I grab from that and I think they did it so well because they did come up with that more dry cream formula but it's creamy enough to where it's super easy to blend out on the cheeks like you see that soft flush I have so many of these I'm pretty sure I have like over a dozen they have pinks they have purples they have more nude shades so you're bound to find a shade that you really enjoy here and even with newer released cream blushes and stuff like that on the market I can still reach for these and still love them and think they're just as good as you know newer products all right I just powdered my face and I did forget to mention about the nude sticks another reason why I love these is because they go on to powder very very nicely like if you stipple it on with a brush after you powder maybe you're finding that your blush is kind of more toned down after you powder then they go on really well and another blush that I want to talk about that I was using religiously I think during the pandemic is this one it is the M Cosmetics Faded Clementine Baked Blush you can't really tell because it is baked but this was well loved I just adored this blush look at that color it's kind of like a warmer peachy tone the perfect warm blush shade looking at it now it looks kind of orange but we're gonna put it on the skin and see how it looks i think baked formulations in general we just we kind of like forgot about them you know i do feel like they're making a slight comeback which is why i'm like ooh, i can't forget that i have this and i love this but this blush was so iconic for me like it was one of the first blushes that i found myself falling in love with i love this formulation because it is baked so it has that softer finish it gives you that really soft glow and it doesn't necessarily have any glitter to it but it definitely gives you a very nice sheen to the skin and as you can see it's super pigmented so a little bit of this goes a very very long way I think that this one is gonna come back into rotation honestly during the spring and summer because it just screams like spring and summer shade to me but even though it's really pigmented it's so easy to blend out on the skin and it just gives you that natural healthy lit from within glow moving right along to an eyeshadow favorite that i feel like not only i have forgotten about but a lot of other people have forgotten and it is the dose of colors baked brown eyeshadow palette this 
eyeshadow palette was such a staple for me so as you can see they are all brown tones except for you know that lighter shade right there you get pretty much everything that you need for an eye look i'm gonna just do a really simple one right here as you can see this was really well loved so i'm using this bk beauty angie hot and flashy a503 brush and i'm just gonna go in with deserted now you can see there's a lot of fallout right there you can see like the dust going everywhere Ooh, it's everywhere so that's one thing about these that's not like ideal but i never found it really affected the way that it applied as long as i like tapped my brush off you know i was able to get the excess off but look at that pigmentation when i first picked up the patrick ta major dimensions matte palette it reminded me a lot of the dose of colors ones except there was slightly less fallout and i would say those are maybe like a touch more pigmented but still they're so similar in texture and the way that they perform it just like reminded me of this palette and i was like oh yeah i have that palette i should bust it out sometime and i think that dose of colors in general kind of has like fallen off off of people's radar and it's really sad because i was so in love with dose of colors i feel like all of the products that they had come out during like their peak were just so innovative and all the formulations were just right maybe not the matte liquid lipsticks like those for me were a little bit drying but the single eyeshadows i still have all of those like the really glittery shimmery ones i still have all of those i was really tempted maybe a year ago to purchase a new baked browns palette because I just remembered really liking it and it's such an easy palette to use and I think the fact that you get limited amounts of shades really helps with decision making if you kind of get paralyzed with making a decision especially when it comes to makeup or like maybe you're trying to put together a makeup look and those giant palettes are just overwhelming for you something like this simplifies that whole process and just makes it a little bit more enjoyable that blended out like nothing nobody's business that was so good now using this bk and nikki la rose n13 brush i'm just gonna take the shade right next to it and use this in the outer corners just to like deepen it a little i think because it is that baked formulation it makes the powders softer so that's why they're like easier to work with they're more pigmented and stuff it's just so good it's so no Fuss. Also going to take this BK Nikki LaRose number N11 and I'm going to take the darkest brown right there and just make a little winged eyeliner moment. We've officially finished the face products so I removed my lip balm and now we're going to talk about lip products that I don't want you guys to forget aka I don't want to forget myself because as you know I have a ton of lip products. These are the Maybelline lifter glosses. I'm sure that tons of people still use the lifter glosses to this day but I don't want you guys to forget about these specific ones these are both from the candy drop line i believe it came out last summer and i just feel like this came and went like this collection was released and then it was kind of like looked over so this is the shade sweetheart it looks like this bright orange red in the tube but when you get on the lips it is the perfect orangey ready pink shade it's so wearable and you know what this reminds me of house labs phd lip oil in the shade secondary i was gonna say secondary okay it has that same lifter gloss formulation so it's nice and balmy doesn't feel sticky on the lips it leaves your lips nice and shiny there's no glitter to this so it is a sheer orange shade and as you can see it's just lovely and it has a very nice sweet scent to it i'm pretty sure that all the lifter glosses have the same scent even though this is a different collection you definitely smell that scent but it goes away after a couple of minutes i don't really mind it i've never had an issue with it and the taffy shade again looks very very intimidating in the tube but it gives you that perfect sheer berry tone that i feel like a lot of people have been really loving lately they're so easy to just apply on the lips get that really nice sheer wash of color you can build it up and get even more pigmentation here and it never ever gets goopy it doesn't give you that stringy mess you know these are just incredible i really enjoy the more sheer shades i think that they're super wearable and i just tend to gravitate towards them a little bit more and they feel so nice on the lips and they're just such a joy 
such a joy to wear. I also want to talk about the Glossy Ultra Lips. I believe that these were their first sort of lipstick formulations and specifically the shades Trench and Ember. I've talked about Trench previously on my channel. I really enjoy this one as kind of like a nudie brown tone. It applies almost like a slick balm, you guys, and it's so easy such a good no fuss type of lip balm i feel like the longer glossy balm sticks have taken the place of these types of lipsticks where it's a little bit more structured like it doesn't melt down the second it touches your lips but it's still nice and creamy and it spreads onto the lips really nicely they hold their shape a little bit more so you're able to kind of control how much you deposit onto your lips it is a little bit more of a warm tone so i don't know if this is going to suit every single skin tone or every single undertone but for me as someone with a medium skin tone I find that this is the perfect nudie brown shade without it being too much like I could justify wearing this with a full face of makeup or with nothing at all and still feel like it looks like it's not out of place and this shade in ember I honestly don't use very often but it also gives that really nice stained kind of look to it, you know, like you can blot it on there. The pigmentation on these are so underrated. Like these are incredibly pigmented without being splotchy. They still look really nice and hydrating. As you can see, I just blotted that onto my lips and you can still see a little bit of shine there. I think they were under $20 before, whereas now they are $20, but still it is kind of on the lower range when it comes to different lipsticks that are available at Sephora. It's not the lowest, but I would say it's like mid price point. And again, you can build this one up to be more full coverage. They do give you a little bit more control. So for shades that are a little bit darker, maybe something that's a little out of your comfort zone, it's a lot easier to control when it's in a formulation like this. Another more glossy lipstick are these from Fenty Beauty. These are the Slick Shines. I have the shades Goji Gang and Cookies and Cocoa. These are more like pinky brown nudes, as you guys know. No, I love them. <laughs> so here is cookies and cocoa. These do have a little bit of like a hint of shimmer in them. And then here is Goji Gang. They're very similar, but cookies and cocoa does have a little bit more of a brown tone while Goji Gang has a little more pink in it. And as you can see from the swatch there, in the light, they almost look a little bit metallic. I don't know. I think that there might be a little bit of glitter in here. These are going to be slightly more melty than those Glossy Ultra Lips, but they still have enough hold to them, like a little bit thicker of a formulation to where it doesn't just melt all over your lips. And you can see it almost looks metallic there. Like they're so shiny and these definitely feel like a slicker lip balm to me. I would say that these have kind of like a sheer to medium coverage. You can definitely just swipe on a little bit of this and get very, very little coverage, but you still get that color. You still get that shine and hydration. Oh, they do have glitter. Like see, you can see a little left over here. The glitters are so fine that you can barely tell they're like embedded into the lipstick they don't feel gritty at all you virtually cannot feel them on the lips and it doesn't look glittery you know it just looks like really really shiny <laughs> i wore these all the time when i first purchased them i thought that they were so innovative and so nice the next one is a lip liner it is the milani spice lip liner this one everyone and their mother loved and still love probably but personally I have forgotten about it. It is such a beautiful lip liner and you saw how easy that was to draw on. It is creamy, it is pigmented. It glides on, but it's slightly drier because you do have this sharpenable pencil and I find that these are just naturally slightly drier, which I like because it lasts a lot longer on my lips. The color stays for hours and it is the perfect shade for my lips personally to just deepen them up a little bit, maybe the outer corners and then fill it in with another lip color. It just looks so natural, almost like I have a natural contour to my lips. And I'm just going to top that with Goji Gang. This is seriously rivaling a lot of different high-end lip liners and it comes at such a good price point. It is the perfect shade. I honestly think I have maybe 
two or three different lip liners from Milani and I never reach for those because this one is just perfect. And the last products I want to talk about are these lip stains. I'm not going to be putting them on today, but I will insert a video of me applying these. These are the Satchu lip stains and these are absolutely incredible. They are exactly what they say they are with no fuss. It is a dark lip stain, but you apply this all over the lips and then you let it set. It becomes this very thin plasticky like peel off type of situation. And then you peel it off after I think it's 20 minutes and then you're left with the most beautiful natural stain. The reason why I think these are so great is because they were initially created to be lip liners. So they're supposed to be lip liner stains which by itself is very, very innovative. Just being able to go in with this really skinny doe foot and just line the outside of your lips, leave it alone, and then once you peel it off, it gives you that beautiful contour on the outside of your lips. That by itself is very innovative and because they did mean to make these contours on your lips there are these more neutral colors so they're not going to pull too red on the lips they're the perfect brown neutral shades and they also came out with new ones which i picked up i'm waiting for them to come to me and i'm so excited because they're more brown i feel like they got really really viral on tiktok everyone bought them they were sold out for months and then they restocked them and then they kind of like died down. This does have to stay on pretty long, but I think their intention of only having it on the outside as a lip liner, it wasn't supposed to be as big of a deal, you know, but I like to use these all over my lips. It's not a huge deal. Sometimes I'll just apply it on my lips, leave it as I do the rest of my makeup, and then I'll peel it off. It can sort of emphasize your lip lines, but typically when it comes to a stain, I like to top it with a gloss anyways, because I usually want a stain for the color and the longevity, not necessarily the feel of it. It's not uncomfortable when you peel it off. It almost just feels like you don't have anything on your lips. And I'm so used to wearing something on my lips, whether it be lip balm or a lip color that, you know, I just instinctively like to put a lip balm on top of these. It does start fading on the inside and then kind of fades outwards. So just keep that one in mind. But even through eating, drinking, it stays on like no other. Alrighty guys, that was my entire list for products that I don't think that you should be forgetting this year. Are you guys interested in kind of like a shop my stash video because I wouldn't mind filming that if you guys want to see it let me know in the comments down below also let me know what products you think that we should continue to carry on throughout this year and the next and the next but that is it for this video if you guys enjoyed it if you found it helpful please make sure to like comment and subscribe for more videos like this one and I'll see you guys in my next video bye